to Significant TV, significant stories from significant entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Fran McNeil, and joining me in the studio today is Walter Palmer III, <laughs> owner and distiller of W.P. Palmer Distilling Company. Walter. That is a mouthful. Yes, it and is. And how appropriate, because <laughs> gin can be a mouthful, as well as many young moonshine. Yes. But we'll get to that. Okay. We'll That's get good. to that. So I'm excited to have you on the show today. Thank I'm you so for excited to be here. stepping away from the distillery yes. um, to share some of your spirit mm -hmm. and your spirits. I'm very happy to be here. Good, good. Tell me why are you doing what you're doing? Why are you in the distilling business? Um, it started actually when I lost my job in 2012. Mm -hmm. And as I looked for a job, I tried to find, um, I tried to get back to what I was doing, which was running a, a large trade association in the mm -hmm. Delaware Valley. Um, I'd done that for over 27 years. I couldn't mm -hmm. really, I spent a lot of time trying to get back to that space. Mm -hmm. um, but ultimately, um, as I was looking for a job, I started, I asked my wife if I could buy a still and I started uh, distilling because when you're looking for a job, you kind of need something to do. Mm -hmm. um, I like, I like making things. So okay. I, I like, I like process and I also like to talk about it. And as I was looking for a job, I started making beer. I started, I, and I had always made beer, but I had started making beer again, making bread, looked back into wine, and I've read that the laws had changed, and now you could actually start a small craft distillery like craft brewing business did about 25 years ago. Um, so I started the still. I bought a still. I asked my wife if you could do it. It's you know there is some legal challenges about that. I did do that. I started distilling, and. Um, I found that people actually liked what I did, mm. and they liked they liked what I made. I then, as I continued to go for other job interviews and looking for other opportunities, um, and all all along, I just nothing was really coming out. And I I ultimately felt that I didn't. I, I came to the realization that I did not want to be this fifty five year old guy stuck in some middle management job in some company for the remainder of my career. Mm -hmm. And I, it came as like kind of a thought that I, I wanted to move, why should I start, why should I continue to try to get back to where I was? Mm -hmm. I need to do something different. Mm -hmm. And so I went to school, I went up to Cornell, I took some classes on distillation, we started visiting distilleries, and I created this plan B. If I couldn't find a job, I would just, you know, kind of, if I couldn't find a job, which was plan A, I would have mm -hmm. plan B. Mm -hmm. um, and then ultimately it was like one Christmas in 2014 that I actually um, had, I thought I was really teed up to be, get this opportunity, that get this job, and um, it fell through. And, mm -hmm. and job search is a very up and down feeling, and it's a very, you know, you kind of pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and start all over again, and then it doesn't work. And you, after you do that for a while, it just got too much. Right. So right. I just decided that I would. Um, I knew enough. I met enough distillers. I, 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 just decided that I'm going to look for a building. I'm going to open a distillery, and I had enough of. I had, you know. A, a long period of time of research and searching mm -hmm. for buildings and mm -hmm. working on recipes and thinking if I could do it and how was I going to handle the dollar situation. And I ultimately just in 2014 decided that I was going to do it. Um, by June of that year I had found a building. By mm -hmm. August I had signed a lease. And uh, in, in September I had filed for all the applications and everything. And by 2015, Memorial Day of 2015, we had a still in place, we had our licensing in place, we had a distillery ready to go, and Memorial Day weekend, uh, we introduced Liberty Gin um, to Maniunk with mm -hmm. something as wonderfully and elegantly simple as a little chalkboard sign on the sidewalk. I saw, I've seen that chalkboard <laughs> you sign. You have, you have. I have. And I, I didn't tell any of my friends that it was gonna be open because frankly, mm -hmm. I didn't know what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. I was kind of, I was nervous. I was afraid. I had no idea what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, that weekend, we sold out of all the gin we had, and, and we had 
Um, I guess we had about 50 bottles and we mm -hmm. sold out. And ever since then, we've been making gin and selling quite a lot. Um, since then, so we opened in 2015. Mm -hmm. uh, we just celebrated our one year anniversary. Right, congratulations. Um, and uh, we've won an international award. Um, mm -hmm. Out of uh, 1,800 gins judged internationally, we came in second. Um, in San Francisco Whoa. World Spirits Competition, which is hard to believe. Uh, we're in 25 uh, state stores. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we've had people look for our gin as, from as far away as Norway and, and London, mm -hmm. and people drinking our gin as far away as Australia and Germany. Um, and it's actually one of the most wonderful experiences that people actually continue to come back and mm -hmm. purchase our gin. They, they purchase it for themselves, they purchase it for their friends. And now we get emails and phone calls and people stop in and visit us just mm -hmm. because of something that we've made that they've had that has brought them back to us. And it's right. actually a wildly rewarding thing. I mean, it's really kind of amazing. So um, that's how I got to where I am. <laughs> and it's a, it's a wonderful story, and I, I remember you shared mm -hmm. some of the story mm -hmm. um, when I came to right, the distillery right. mm -hmm. and just sort of sat on one of I call them the lounge yeah, chairs, yeah. and um, just you know talked with you and your wife, who right. I went to school with, mm -hmm. and um, heard the story. It's very powerful. Well, we tried to make something that is. We tried to make something that really celebrated all of our assets. My mm -hmm. wife is um, incredibly beautiful and very shy. That's really why she's not here today. But she is my business partner. Mm -hmm. And she, um, we, she is a painter. She is a teacher. Mm -hmm. And our goal was to make a space and create a product that actually would help us kind of bundle all of our assets together. And that mm -hmm. is creativity um, and, and art and, and conversation and a cocktail, which actually helps to bind all those great things together. And that actually has been the recipe for great things that have happened throughout time, is actually somebody always had a drink to kind of smooth things over, to make things mm -hmm. work, and mm -hmm. to actually generate ideas to see what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And that's actually what spirit is all about. I mean, that's yes. actually the yes. concept. And that that's actually why we named our first product liberty mainly because liberty is it is a, it is a movement it is a spirit it is something mm -hmm. that actually started in in Europe or in France and then came here to this country during the birth of our country um, and it's that thought that actually is very compelling and that's mm -hmm. actually why we named our gin the way it, uh, liberty gin you have a bottle, I do. and I'd love for I you do. to show the audience the this label, talk a little bit about the label, and, you know, kind of not too <laughs> much the secret it? for the... Yeah, 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 yeah. But walk, walk the Well, guy. Liberty Gin, uh, is, this is our bottle. We wanted something that actually looked very um, 19th century Philadelphian. Mm -hmm. We wanted something... One of our company mottos is, or our company motto is, as it should be. And that is something that is very much compelling to everything that we do, and that is... Um, we want gin to be gin. We, we don't want it to be this is a gin base and kind of it's my modern interpretation of what gin could be. We wanted things to be the way they should be. And so we look back in time and in history to look for an older recipe for gin. So we went back to the time of the American Revolution and discovered that the Dutch actually were manufacturing gin and bringing gin through the colonies during the Dutch spice trade. Um, in Philadelphia. So our recipe actually goes back to the 18th century, six basic botanicals which were prevalent on the Dutch spice trade. Obviously juniper is the, the big one. Mm -hmm. um, juniper, cardamom, coriander, angelica root, grains of paradise, and lemon peel. So that, that's all that's in our gin, um, which makes it somewhat unique. Um, most gins today are uh, you know, 15 to 20 different ingredients. Mm -hmm. What we've done is we've gone back in time to look for kind of the essence of what gin was. Mm -hmm. And we also then build a still in Maniunk that is a replica of a still from that same time period. So mm -hmm. it's a still that would have been in Philadelphia during the 18th century, and we've married that with a recipe from that same time mm -hmm. period. So when you drink our gin, we like to think it's a little better 
today. But when you drink our gin, you're actually tasting a flavor profile that Washington, Jefferson, and Franklin mm -hmm. would have had as they sat and talked about the Declaration of Independence and actually talked about what liberty really meant mm -hmm. in this country um, and actually in this city. And I, to me, that actually is a very powerful story, is mm -hmm. that when you drink our gin, here in, in Philadelphia you know, or around Philadelphia in the suburbs, you're actually drinking something that actually men that changed the course of the world mm -hmm. drank. Mm -hmm. And that and you're actually drinking it with the same botanicals, based on the same technology. And that to me is a very powerful story. Mm -hmm. And that's that that's kind of the essence of, of our our Liberty Gin. Our bottle is actually a celebration of Philadelphia's next great heyday, which is really the 19th century. So we mm -hmm. wanted something that actually felt very 19th century. Mm -hmm. um, we wanted it to be very feature Philadelphia. Um, Independence Hall is on there. Um, if you really look closely, this is actually a moment when the Liberty Bell was actually moving through um, in front of Independence Hall. Um, and uh, it is... Uh, it, it has the old stamp of, of what um, old spirit bottles have, and that's mm -hmm. really what we wanted. We wanted something that um, felt very, mu very much a regional thing. Mm -hmm. um, you can buy gin anywhere. You can only drink this gin made here in this southeastern Pennsylvania right now, and that's what we wanted. Very, very cool. Now, you have gone on to create some other products. Mm -hmm. um, I, in fact, have purchased the uh, ever-elusive <laughs> Maniac Moonshine. The ever-elusive Maniac Moonshine. Yeah. It's, it, 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 <laughs> Maniac Moonshine is actually another great recipe that mm -hmm. comes out of the American Revolution. It's George Washington's recipe for white whiskey. Mm -hmm. um, and the beautiful thing about that is, is that it's made with Bucks County corn and Chester County malted mm -hmm. barley. We only use Pennsylvania spring water in all of our spirits. Mm -hmm. um, so when you actually drink our Maniunk Moonshine, it is actually a spirit that George Washington would have had on a saddle from Valley Forge to Trenton. Mm. This is exactly what he drank from the land that he marched across trying to evade the British right mm -hmm. here in this region. Mm -hmm. um, our challenges is, as, as a new business owner, is we build a factory and Manufacturing is a challenge, and you know we've we've actually had a bit of a challenge scaling up from small batches to large batches, mm -hmm. and that's why uh, Maniac Moonshine is so elusive right now. But, but it's kind of cool. We are going to we are uh, <laughs> cool. we we are going to uh, we, it is coming back. Great. Fortunately, our gin is actually selling very very well, um, mm -hmm. and we've actually gone full throttle at the distillery with gin right now. Um, I'm hoping in August we can get back to uh, whiskey production. Terrific, so. terrific. And you um, also, people can rent out your facilities mm -hmm. on a yep. limited basis yes. and have parties there. Yeah, we've can had, you talk uh, just briefly sure. about that? Sure. We've had, um, we've had several, uh, mostly revolving around the wedding mm -hmm. kind of genre, um, mainly because we have a, we do a CSA pickup for flowers with Jenny Love uh, Flowers, which is, she's a Martha Stewart certified florist in, in uh, Philadelphia. Um, and people actually have rented out the distillery for either rehearsal dinner or bridal showers. Mm -hmm. um, we've sat down 45 people, we've had valet parking. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very, it's a fairly rustic place, mm -hmm. but it is uh, unique and there are not many places where you can actually sit and enjoy friendship around a still that actually has made the spirits that you're actually drinking. Um, and cool. there really just aren't that many locations like that. We do hope to actually open a cocktail space in that, in that mm -hmm. same area. Um, and we, we look forward to the time when people actually come in and have a cocktail um, uh, around our still and, and enjoy uh, each other's company over a nice, uh, wonderfully handcrafted spirit. Well, Walter, this has been an absolute pleasure. It's been a great um, time to be here. Continue doing what you're doing. Where can people find you? Well, you can find us at the distillery uh, on Saturdays at 376 mm -hmm. Shures Lane mm -hmm. um, in Maniunk. We're right up the hill from uh, Main, Main Street. Mm -hmm. um, you can also purchase our Liberty Gin at select uh, um, fine wine and, and good spirit stores. Um, in the southeastern Pennsylvania, we're all, we're predominantly on the main line here. Mm -hmm. um, so we're in Ardmore, Bryn Mawr, 
Wayne, Paoli, and Exton, those Excellent. stores. Um, we're also downtown in a number of stores down there, um, and our sales are doing fairly well. And we've been adding about four or five stores a month, so it's been good. Excellent. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you for having me. My pleasure. There you have it. Spirited, significant, distilling, Liberty Gin. It's a perfect recipe, and you can find more at Walter P. Palmer Distilling Co. Thanks for joining us for Significant TV, Significant Stories from Significant Entrepreneurs.